All right, welcome back guys. In this video, we are starting on the deformation for the head. So we can go ahead and uh, if you haven't done so already, group up the head. This way it'll make our node view a little bit smaller, a little bit less intimidating. So we can go in there, access the group, and then zoom out a little bit to see just what we have in here. Um, so right now, starting from the left side, so I'm just doing the same as I did with the body, just going left to right to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Um, here I've got the eyebrows. Um, the eyebrows will definitely need to have some deformation to them. Uh, so one thing we can do for the eyebrows is have, same as what we did with the feet, have two different types of deformers. Um, sometimes you'll want to have something that's a little bit more flexible, thin out the eyebrows a little bit, make sure that the angle is right, uh, which is some, some things that can't necessarily always be done using a uh, curve deformation. So we could have one with the curve, one with the envelope, and use both of those depending on what we need for that. Uh, usually in the 360 though, I'll only be using one of them, and if need be, we can always switch over to another one when we uh, start animating our rig. So um, I have my eyebrow, let me just go and bring that over here. I'll bring my library in so we can get a closer look at um, the, the amount of drawings that we have in here. So right now I have the one. I can do um, a curve deformation for my main one. I'm mentioning curve here, um, but um, it's really for pieces like these. I prefer to use the envelope tool as well to go and create uh, the curve on the inside. So we're basically using the same tool, we'll go into the ringing tool, access the um, envelope mode over here from the tool properties, and then go back into the node view. Um, so instead of applying the envelope around it, I'm actually going to use it same as I would with a curve. So I'll just pull out this little Bezier here go to the other end of my eyebrow. For the eyebrows, I try to avoid having too many points really, unless it's a really defined shape. Um, I like to have two points, simple as this. And when you're using the envelope, you can actually move both points. Um, so uh, if you were to use a curve deformer, you would have this, kind of, this uh, little point here kind of grounded and uh, it would move the entire eyebrow when you move it. So using this one, we can create all sorts of expressions. Let's see if I wanted to have the corner of this eyebrow a little bit more over here. Um, this is not something that I could do unless I go and modify the drawing. So I have my first deformation here. I'm going to duplicate my drawing. If I want, I can rename that since now both are just named one, control D or command D. This is going to be two. I can name it uh, envelope if I want, underscore ENV. And now I have my second drawing. And this one, I'll go and create a new deformation chain for it and I'll go and create the full envelope around it. So for this one, maybe you'll want to have one over here in the middle. Um, it all depends on the expression charts that you have. For this character, he's pretty straightforward um, and his expressions can be defined well enough with just three points. So I'm going to go ahead and create those. Press Alt to connect to the end and there we have it. So just make sure that you adjust these little curves at the end here, making sure that we have um, enough room to really make that curve work when we position it. We can try it out after. 
So see, it's going to give me something like this where I can move around the points, create new expressions, and just like that, you would have uh, a different curve than you would using uh, the previous method. So I'm going to reset these. Uh, this can be done, of course, for both the eyebrows. Now, moving on to the rest of our head here. Um, I'm looking at the eyes here, the, uh, the pupils inside of the model, if we go back to it over here. So the pupils inside the model, if we look at how they behave throughout the entire structure, um, right here it is going to be squashed down. So we can always achieve that with a peg and uh, in general I would say if you can do it with a peg, don't necessarily start throwing deformation everywhere. It's just giving you too much information to work with and uh, contributes to making the rig a little bit too heavy. So if we can achieve it by just taking that, squashing it down and repositioning it for the side view, we might as well do that. So I'm not saying this is gonna be the best case scenario for every single character that you encounter. Sometimes the pupil will have uh, their own design and will require uh, additional distortion when the character moves, but for this character, not necessarily the case. So that's why um, you really need to make sure that you keep that rotation close by. Pay attention to the design because each character is unique. Um, so for the eyelid top here, I can pretty much do the same thing as I did for the eyebrow. Only for this one, I'm going to be using this to create uh, a mask for covering up the eye of my character. So we'll just leave that one aside for now and include uh, a portion of the mask later on inside the deformation. So we're leaving aside a few pieces here uh, that we'll come back to later on. Um, for the eye here, however, uh, I can start putting the deformation directly on this one. Maybe I'll want to turn off this one right here just to make sure that we can see the entire shape of the eye and that we position our envelope as best as possible for this one. So I'm gonna grab my rigging tool. Again, I'm inside the envelope mode already. I'll do a click here. Um, so for the eye, maybe it would be best to have two points here just to make sure that we can really change the expression as much as we want. So I can come and adjust these a little bit and create this one. And I'm going to go to the corner of the eye, create another one here, just readjusting the curve every time. And I can probably close it off at this point since I have both corners. So I can test it out after, select both of these points if I want and kind of move them. Uh, around to make sure that uh, all of this makes sense. I can use the handles, I can break them off to create additional expressions here and pretty much do the same over here. Um, but again, we'll use uh, a mask a little bit later on that's going to come and cover up uh, the upper part of the eye here. So we'll leave that one for now, this is the eye back, so you guys can go ahead and apply the same thing on the eye back. Um, the mouth is going to be the same situation. The mouth is very often going to require some systems in there that we'll want to add. Um, so we'll come back to that in a later module. We'll be able to, uh, to set up the deformation at that point. So there's no need to really uh, do everything at once for this. The nose is a pretty simple shape. I think um, I think instead of adding deformation to the nose, uh, again, if we look at our model here, so the nose starts looking pretty much the same on every view except for the side view. So I'm thinking for this guy, We'll probably just swap over to a different drawing once we get there and uh, we'll be able to 
kind of squash it down a little bit for the quarterback view. So there's really no need to break it down into the little highlight and the little lines that are inside of the nose. Um, we're really just going to create new drawings, uh, a new drawing for this one that once we get to creating the side view. Okay, let's go back to our nose here. Move to the right. Um, we have little pieces of hair right here. Um, because these have already been split down into three, you may want to add uh, a curve deformer in there. You may decide that uh, according to the style of the animation, it's not exactly necessary and that it would move fine. Using a peg just to give it a slight bounce, um, giving it a curve deformation in there would add a little bit of additional flexibility, of course, um, so you could have it bounce while keeping um, the bottom part of the hair right here uh, a little more grounded. So can be an option. We can always add that in and uh, remove them later if we change our minds. Um, so I'm really leaving that one up to you guys. We have the jaw, the jaw, which is this portion right here. It is covered up by a lot of stuff. Um, so if we don't want the view to be cluttered, we'll just go over to our timeline and click enable solo right here. We'll hide all these other deformers by just clicking on show selected deformation chain and hide all others. So the jaw is going to move around quite a bit depending on if the character's um, chin moves with the lip sync. So for some characters this will be a very crucial uh, measure adding the deformation on this piece. For some other characters the chin will not move at all but it's still good to have deformation on it as uh, if you have different head tilts and so on you will most likely have to move this around. So grabbing the rigging tool, I'll take the jaw and give it a pretty straightforward point here in the middle where the chin is going to be. I'm going to put one over at the corner right here, so a little bit close to the cheek and probably have one in the center here. This is starting to overlap with the head. I could have one that's in the center here if I need to adapt certain things, but I think it's not uh, completely necessary, so I'll just skip it for this part and keep going, redoing the same thing over on this side and reconnecting it. Again, it doesn't need to be 100% perfect so long as it's pretty close to what the original line is going to be for this one. It's still going to move just fine. And we can turn off solo mode and see how that is looking. So it's about at the junction here, which is pretty good. It's going to allow me to adapt depending on what I want and I can still stretch this line if I need to take up a little bit more room uh, inside of the head or not. Uh, moving on to the cheeks. Uh, the cheeks will be a really simple uh, envelope around it since it gets a little bit curvier, uh, a little bit thinner depending on the views. So we can just go and take each one at a time and pretty much apply the same recipe. So we'll want the point at the tip here uh, to hold a certain control so we can simply pretty much create a basic triangle, doesn't need to be anything too fancy. Um, we'll just create a, something like this and the base here is actually inside of the face so we can try to get it as close as possible to how it's going to look. And from there, let's turn off solo mode and we should be able to have a certain flexibility in the movement, be able to, uh, to curve up that particular piece and if need be, adjust this one other part here. 
So we can do all four of these pieces. So once you've created all four of these, you can go ahead and move on to the next video where we'll check the rest of the head and how to separate it with deformation. See you there.